Why is trust such an important element in organizations and how can managers develop it? So trust is uh, essential. That is trust enables people to be vulnerable and to do things like share information. So maybe I'm in an organization and I understand some software or I understand how to network with this client or get things done in a particular way. I have this information that makes me valuable. In an organization, we need people to share information. For us to really tap the potential of our organization, we need knowledge mm -hmm. to flow. We need people to trust others. When I say, oh, I need you to do me this favor or work longer or take this other assignment, you have to trust me that I'm gonna take care of you later on right. and that I'll remember it and, and recognize your investment. So without trust, leaders really can't lead and organizations don't function well. So trust is really essential. It's essential for organizations. It's essential for economies. Now, we think about how do we build trust? And interestingly, um, you know, I said that when we trust others, we're willing to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to be vulnerable first. So you think about sort of the opposite of this. That is, uh, suppose two people are getting married and right before the wedding, one says, oh, I need a prenuptial agreement. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that signal? Yeah. It signals a lack of trust. And with that lack of trust, it can be so corrosive that we end up unraveling that relationship because I haven't made myself vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And there are other ways we can sort of think about vulnerability, but when we make ourselves vulnerable, we engender trust. So sometimes that, that means we share information. So I might go first and say, hey, let me show you, here are things that I know, or let me open the books for you. Let me show you some information that helps you out. In relations with people, sometimes reveal embarrassing stories or they go s sing karaoke together. Mm -hmm. So we do things that make ourselves a little bit vulnerable to yeah. other people. It's like one reason why drinking together can sometimes help people bond. Yeah. So we can make ourselves vulnerable. Another key idea is to think about, there's sort of two key things. One is competence, another is warmth. So I can demonstrate high competence, and that'll instill your trust. That is, if I'm competent, then you know that you can trust me to make good decisions, to understand the landscape, the competitive landscape. So competence is important, but the other is warmth. Mm -hmm. And warmth means this is somebody that you like, that you think is kind and benevolent. And this is somebody, for example, who might donate their time or uh, take care of a sick relative. My favorite example of this is presidents get dogs. Now, since the advent of television, Eisenhower, we've had every American president has had a dog in the White House. So true. And what's fun is this the, the sort of presidential sort of like a canine imperative, it extended to the Obamas. When, when Barack Obama won the presidency, he had never had a dog, and for good reason. His daughter Malia is allergic to dogs. Uh, and yet, moving to the White House, Gotta get you had to get a dog. <laughs> you know, you see you know, presidents are rolling on the ground with a dog. George Bush was good at that. Yeah. Um, and even Obama's were playing with his dog. The, it, it conveys some warmth, mm. and that warmth turns out to be important. So the family ties that you have, the volunteer work that you do, the concern you demonstrate for other people, and the time you spend with your dog, that <laughs> demonstrates warmth in a way that helps us build trust. So it's competence and warmth.